So welcome once again to another extremely detailed video and I will show you how I use this one light and these foam boards to shoot these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome once again to my small home studio. And for you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area of 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. But in today's video, I will be using a little bit more of the studio towards this side, but less of the studio this side. So technically, I am only using about 2 meters, and 2 meters wide and 3.5 or 3 meters deep. So what is the modifier that we will be using today? It is this one. This is a 30 by 40 foam board. It's basically just an ordinary foam board, which I will use as a reflector. It is held in place using some Justin clamps. This is what we call a Justin clamp, but there are other more affordable options for this one in Amazon or for Filipino, for Filipino viewers, it's in Lazada. So I have it mounted on my light stand this way. This particular light stand from Photix I like because I can put my spigot this way. In other words, I can have it going horizontally instead of vertically because normally the spigot is this way where you could put your, land, your lights. But if I do that and I mount it like this, I won't be able to hold this 20 by 30 cm foam board. So that's why I like these light stands here. So if I put it here and then this one's here, I can therefore mount this foam board like so and I will put it somewhere here all right now i actually have oops ooh almost i all i actually have a white seamless paper set up right here it's from savage it's a basic white seamless paper however you can actually use just a white wall in your studio so if you have a blank white wall there that will do actually that might even be better because there's a bit more texture and i do love texture if you guys are really familiar with the channel now I have here something exactly the same as that one, another white foam board with a adjusting clamp with that same light stand, which I will put on the opposite side of this one. Now, what light am I using? I am using this. This is my Sony F60RM. I also have here another styrofoam board, which is actually smaller. I think this is two by four feet. And I have a specific purpose for this one, which I will show you guys later. So back to the flash unit. I am using this one. This is the Sony F60RM. This is basically a battery operated flash, otherwise known as a speed light. And one thing I like about these speed lights is that they're small and handy and very easy to put on a C-stand like this. Now I'm going to mount it on this one. This is the MagMod MagShoe. This mag shoe is basically an umbrella holder and also a flash mount. It is mounted on this Avenger C stand. I don't know if you can see me. Maybe I'll just move this camera here first. This is the Avenger C stand. One of the best investments I've ever done for the studio because of how sturdy it is. It's so easy for me to actually use this um, uh, C stand in terms of having it right above my subject because it now serves as a boom. And I have it set this way and I have a spigot right here. Let me show you. I have a spigot right here mounted on the C-stand so that I can do something very special to this modifier later, which I will show you. There's a specific technique that I do with this one that will actually surprise you a lot. So again, the proper way to mount your lights on a speed on a C stand is to make sure if you have the boom arm like this, the direction of the boom arm is always towards the direction of how to tighten. So if I'm tightening this this way, the direction of the C stand should be going here. 
so that if there's any weight, it's just going to tighten the C stand as a boom arm. And of course, you've got your, your weights here. And the important thing is that you don't have your weights hitting the floor, so you put it on the higher leg of the C stand so that you've got a very stable light like this and don't do what I just did. All right, so the camera now. The camera that I will be using is, of course, my ever dependable Sony A7 Mark IV. The lens will be the 50mm 1.2 GM. This particular gearhead that I'm using now for the studio, which is fantastic, this is from Benro. This is a GD3WH. And one thing I like about this particular gearhead is that I can have quick movements like this. And if I want to adjust it and fine tune it, all I have to do is press this one. It's going to go up, down, or maybe left, right, or even this way. So quick movement, and you can do precise movements. Perfect for the studio. And I recently got this. It's a car carbon fiber tripod, also from Benro. It's the Rhino series. Now, I'm recording everything, of course, with this one, the Atomos Ninja V. And I have a field world monitor here that's connected to my Atomos Ninja V, which, by the way, is connected to my camera so that I can get a live view of whatever it is that I am shooting. And of course, my model can also see how he or she looks like. Okay, what else? The, the Atomos is held together using this one or it's held in place using the eye footage. These are the spider crabs, also the spider crab here. Fantastic accessories, all right? And of course, my flash is gonna be triggered using this one, the Sony WRC-1M, and everything is held together in my camera using the small rig cage from the from small rig. It's a small rig cage for the A7 IV. All right, so that's basically my entire setup here. And I think it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. And at the same time, I'll bring out my trusty measuring tape. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hi, babe. All right, as early as now, I'm gonna ask for your patience because this is gonna be an extremely detailed video again. All right, okay, so, Let's talk about how I'm gonna set up these foam boards. The basic concept of this one, that's why, oh, I didn't even talk about the umbrella. This is an 85cm shoot-through umbrella from Photix. Now, normally, I'm gonna do a basic clamshell lighting for this particular lighting setup. So I'll have it high above, like so. Then I will have these two foam boards, basically just capturing the light and reflecting it back towards Coco. Now, there's one thing that I'm gonna do here with this particular light, uh, particular um, direction of light, which will surprise you guys. So let's adjust first our composition and make sure that everything's set before I tweak the light. So, cool, right? All I have to do is do that, bring the, the light closer, make sure that we're perfectly level. Let me see, all right. Oh, my settings aren't here, so let me turn on, of course, my HDMI info so you could see everything that I'm doing there. So let's bring out the leveler here. So it's level already, but this one maybe have it this way. I think I'm good with that. Since I'm doing a half body portrait, I have my camera set to about her chest level. So these two lights here, let's bring out, as I said earlier, my trusty measuring tape. It is about 18 inches or 16 inches from the side of Coco's face. Both sides, 18 inches or sorry, 16 inches. The light is approximately 70 inches high to the lowest port part. And the lens is 54 inches from the floor. Coco's chest area is about 54 inches. Distance of the of the lens to Coco is about 50 inches. Now, take a look at this one now. I'll use this one as a pointing stick. This particular light, um, since you've got it mounted on the MagMod MagShoe, then it's mounted on this spigot here, it basically removes the light from center of the light. So if you look at it closely, coming from in this angle, you could see that the light will actually hit let me remove this first so you could see Coco. The light would actually hit Coco's forehead and making this the brightest part of the image, which you don't want to do. 
And I want to capture the light coming from here using that styrofoam board right here underneath. Or maybe I'll actually be more, let's be more environmentally friendly, not use a styrofoam board and use maybe a five and one reflector like so from Photix. Maybe I should do that. Okay, so we'll use this one instead. We'll use either the silver or the white side. Okay, so yeah, so we'll use that. Now, where was I? So the light will be coming from the top and hitting Coco's forehead first. And this light here is what we will be capturing to bounce it off to have the, the light uh, removing the shadows from underneath her chin. However, there is a better way of doing that. What we can do is we can invert the light. So let me bring this down. All right. So instead of having the light from above, I can twist this so that, wait, let me do it to make sure it doesn't fall. I can twist this so that it is actually hanging. Instead of being above the C-stand, I can have it from below, like so. And still get the same angle. And by doing that, you notice now the flash is at the bottom. Having the flash at the bottom, then most of the bulk of the light will be hitting this side of the, of the umbrella. This one will be the feather light hitting the forehead of her face. This light we can capture and bounce it back. And by the way, I did something here that I wasn't able to show you guys earlier. I actually brought down this one, the wide angle diffuser. Let me show you the wide angle diffuser. I brought it down so that I get a bigger spread of light. And once again, where the flash ends, is where my umbrella will begin. That's normally how I set up these umbrellas. And sometimes I'll even point it so that it faces down even more. Okay, so let's bring this up now. All right. I think that's a bit too high. There, that should be perfect. Direct this light this way. Those are the beautiful things about speed lights. You can direct the direction of the light. There we go. So have it in the same, more or less, distance. And then let's start off with the white one first. So again, this is not actually an actual representation of my exposure. Right now, my settings are 1 over 125, which I won't do. I'll do 1 over 250. My aperture is set at 7.1 and my ISO at 100. So if you want to see the actual exposure, this is with light view display on. It's pitch black. In other words, Everything or every light that you will be seeing will be coming from my flash. All right. So let's turn off live view so I can see what I'm shooting. Have this one here. Now I like these reflectors because you've got a grip so it's easier for us to hold it this way. But of course, if you had an assistant, it's even better. Or I could actually ask Coco to hold on to that side, maybe just on the grip. But that would greatly limit what she can do in terms of posing. But Coco is really great when it comes to posing. She can easily do something. And let's take one shot. Sorry. It's all right. So right now we're underexposed because what's our flash power? Let me check. We are actually at only 1 16th power. Let's put it maybe on full power and see. There we go. Beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. That's just from one light. Well, you know what? I'll get a reflector holder for this one, but I think I can hold it this way. Let me see. It's quite heavy. Honestly, I want it to be environmentally friendly, but I'm sorry. I'll just use this foam board first. Anyway, I don't throw it away. It's just here in the studio because this one is so much lighter to hold on to. So I can just do this. There we go. Fantastic, babe. Beautiful. She looks beautiful, doesn't she? Now, maybe I'll point it down a bit more. See, that's why I love this, these gear heads. Notice I don't even have to touch the camera. I'm not worried. Unlike a standard ball head, when I release it, it's just going to topple all over. With a gear head, I can do minute adjustments like that. And you look fantastic, babe. Beautiful. Beautiful, chin up. Fantastic. And. You know what? I might even stop down. This time I'll stop down to 6.3. Can we do those poses again? I just want a little bit more light. And since we are at already full power, I just stopped down my aperture. But even if I did look, it's still pitch black. 
So it's still actually controlling my existing ambient light and beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Chin up a little bit, babe. So with one light, we're able to create a very nice, beautiful white portrait, just fantastic. All we needed to do was really figure out how the light really works and how to bounce it all over. Okay, this is what we call control bounce. Nice. You could see yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice, see? It actually works. It's very easy for her to post because she could see exactly what she's doing. Nice. Nice. So once again, this is an extremely detailed video, but I might have missed out on something. And if I did, feel free to ask any question you want and leave it in the comment section below. And once again, babe, thank you very much. Fantastic images, right? Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do like the video because it does help the algorithm and subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.